Well, that didn't work out so hot for me. I don't know what I just touched, but I started the video before I got everything in there. So let's edit it and see what we got. It'll take me a second. Good. Thumbnail. Done. Kids. Someday, you guys, I'm going to be big enough that all of this, I'll have a helper. This will all be done before I get on here. You wait and see. All right, let's save that. And go back. Okay. I am here. Christy's here. Sharon's here. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining me. Let me get my other screen up here so I'm good to go. I have my lighting kind of messed up tonight. So um, when I moved everything for class on Sunday, I'm not getting it all put back together right. So I'm not exactly sure. Um, hopefully my shadows and stuff will be all right. So uh, I'm going to get started. I'm Jill Blanchett with Green Thumb Stampers here in Vicksburg, Michigan. Um, I think it was cold out today when I went to the gym. I'm trying to think of the rest of the day. The rest of the day I spent down here, you guys. Um, got my newsletter done and then I worked on my cards. Oh, and I didn't bring the one over. Hang on. I'm protecting the one I got to mail out. So um, I worked on my cards and. I don't know what else I did, you guys, but it's been a basement day. My life is a lot of basement days. I'm going to end up looking like the guy that used to come in when I worked at Foremost in Grand Rapids. Um, our IBM repair guy that worked on third shift, they called him the gray ghost because he must have slept all day and then worked under fluorescent lighting the rest of the time. So he had a weird skin color going on. So I'm going to look like that for too long if I spend too much time down here in the basement. But anyway, welcome. Thank you for joining me. I am going to tell you today's free shipping, $75 orders and up, get you some free shipping. So um, remember that prices are going up. So if there's an ink pad that you use a lot of, or you need free inkers or um, paper, the inkers are going up a dollar. So if you got any inkers that you need, um, I think paper goes up 75 cents a pack. Um, so there's just a lot of stuff that's going to go up. And today's a perfect day to order any of that that you might need. Um, you saw my car warming up. Oh, yeah, it might have been Mike out there. Actually, he, he probably just pulled out of the garage. He doesn't really warm it up if you're talking to me, Patty, about our car. but. Um, he was probably just waiting for me to come out of the house and get in the car. Um, I lost my train of thought because I was trying to look at my, um, notes down or my, you guys talking down there and see who all was getting on. Um, so I was just telling you about all the stuff that was on sale with the price increases. Um, if you subscribe to paper pumpkin via a, um, prepaid, the paper pumpkins are going up like a dollar a month as well. So you can get that today. Uh, prepaids, if you get an occasional prepaid, you could even consider getting yourself a three to six month subscription. Then you can get the kits that you want. That will come with free shipping today. Um, 
well, again, as long as your order is $75 or more. And I think that's it for specials and all that. My um, color clubs, let me know if you want to get in on those. Those are the new ink colors. Um, and I won't go through the whole thing, but if you're interested, contact me. I'll shoot you the details on the there's two clubs and discount for joining both. And I think that's it. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to turn my camera down and show you guys what I got going on here. So hang on a second. One, two. Spotlight down on my desktop. Let's put my computer over here where I can. Oh, no, it's going to be off to the side, so I'm not really going to see too much. Yeah, price increases, Patty. But you guys, I um, didn't tell you, so I, I'll tell you now when um, while I'm going on here. Um, shipping today will most likely be delayed. Um, a little bit because uh, they had the largest shipping day in their 35 year history on the 4th when the um, closeouts and the pre order for demonstrators started. I ordered this bad boy on the 4th and I just got it today. Um, so they were working around the clock to get that stuff out and get prepared to work on the orders that came in today to get those cleared by the time that the new catalog orders start on the second so that they can be um, up to date and not have too long of shipping delays. So um, if you did order today, just be prepared that it could take a little bit. Um, I'm trying to think what else. They had some really awesome, they said that um, they sold more on the fourth than they did the whole, um, month of March. So anyway, as these little tidbits pop in my head that um, I'll tell you about while I'm showing you the card. So my card today is going to be with Little Monkey. It is a bundle. There's a, can I get that in there without? No. So I'll flip it over. There's a monkey die or punch that goes with the set. Now you can stamp this monkey and punch him or um, there are face and um, hands on here. No, they're not hands, I put them in his ears. His face and ears and a banana on here if you wanna um, build your own. And then there's a little face here that you could put on if you don't wanna stamp that. So that's what I'm gonna use. And let me show you my card. Now my little um, Christie's granddaughter's my friend. And she turned 16 today and she's a huge NASCAR fanatic, I am told. So I tried to, let me close this up. I'm trying to be careful because it's a little wonky. So here's how the card looks when it's folded up. It's called a freestanding or free standalone box card, box tower. That, that they had a ton of different names. So, um, Christy told me that this number five car is her favorite. Um, I'm not real thrilled with my penmanship on the um, sponsor or the fact that, um, let me show you. I used this stamp set from 1995. We did have a NASCAR set, or not 1995, 2005. And we did have like a little NASCAR set at one time. And I purchased that to uh, make a card for my dad. And actually I made this same uh, freestanding card that's how I remembered about this fun fold and so I had to use my white gel pen to try and color out this black so it's a little bit if but that's why because I had to color several times with my white gel pen to cover up the black and if you look close enough you could see the black in the red so you know I tried it pushes down then and becomes a freestanding box card. So this is what I'm gonna show you guys how to make today. And then I will get this one in the mail a little bit late. She turned 16, obviously, sweet 16. I'm just gonna tell her that I got behind a student driver on the way to the post office and 
they drive the speed limit. So I didn't make cut off for her birthday. So where's my card that I then made a second card when my order came, it was a toss up between this and the daisies, but I do so much with flowers. You guys know that Stampin' Up! is just flower, flower, flower. So I tried to think of something different. Mike said that Father's Day was too far away for me to make a Father's Day card. I was gonna use the garden set with the, uh, um, oh, what do you call it? The ladder and the shovel and the rake. I was gonna do that because I thought that this would be really cute with the ladder on it, but I, I used the monkey instead and I turned it into a baby card. And I just put the little monkey and um, congratulations and then babies are a blessing. And then this is what the punch does. I put those as his ears, which I'm thinking that's what they are in his face, stamped his face. And then the rest is from the set. And you guys, who's with me? Does this not, I was gonna grab the ones that I've never used and bring them over. Does this not remind you of our monkey stickers that we did our monkey sticker challenge with? I just thought that he did in these vines. I think it was Dawn's card. Somebody's card had some vines on it and stuff. It looked so cute. But that's what reminded me of um, this monkey set. And so I bought it. I have no use for it. But do I ever buy anything I have a use for from the catalog? I just try and find a use for it. So that's what we're going to make. Let me see if I can lean a block up over here for it to back up onto so you could see it. Well, it's not going to stay up. So rather than fight with that, I'm just going to slide it up there. So I have my instructions here to tell you all my um, cuts and such. It starts with an eight and a half by five and a half inch base. And I might do a uh, um, Finding Friday tutorial, uh, no frills, just showing you all the cuts and scores and stuff. Um, and I'm also going to, you'll see me turn it when I get to like the other half of the scoring, just because with these little tick marks on here, I wasn't exactly sure on one card attempt where I needed to score and it was wrong. So I had to do it over. So I'm just going to turn it, but you'll see when I get there. So, um, our base is eight and a half by five and a half. I have garden green here. And we're going to score it at three quarters of an inch. Two and an eighth. Two and seven eighths. Four and a quarter. Now here at four and a quarter, I'm going to go ahead and score the whole thing. But now you also want to cut here. So put your cut part a little bit before an inch. So maybe like seven eighths or the 16th, what, 15, 16th one. You just need a little smidgy before one. And then you're going to drag that down to four and a half. And then you're going to go a little smidgy past it. And so we've cut and we've scored at four and a half. And then this is where I'm going to turn it. So if you're writing this down or anything, you want to do five and five eighths, six and three eighths, and seven and three quarters. If you like your score thing all the way across, if it does good for you. My little invisible tickers there, I was too reluctant to be able to do it properly on camera. So I turned it and now I'm going to just do those again. So I'm going to do three quarters, two and an eighth, and two and seven eighths. And then we're back to four and a quarter. And that's all that you do there. Now we're going to work with it this direction. Oh, no, we're going to skip that. And I'm going to set that aside. And now I made my designer series paper. So 
let me pull in my scrap paper. So I got my little monkey set and it has some leaves in it that I'm gonna, I'm gonna use these leaves for my background. So we've got this ferny frond looking one. I guess they're all ferny fronds, but I'm gonna use my lemon lime twist, which is a returning color for us. And I'm just going to stamp all over my paper. Let me get my foamy thing in here. I've just got a piece. This is a half sheet of cardstock because I don't, I'm not gonna need it all, but I didn't wanna um, not have enough. So I'm just gonna stamp all over. You wanna fill up your paper with your images. Make it kind of full because you're going to um, cut it up. And if you got too much separation, then your paper will have, your card then will have a lot of space between everything. So I'm gonna call that good for now. We'll go back if we think we need some more. And I've got my other leaf, this long, maybe this is like a banana leaf. Kathy, I forgot to talk to you about bananas from Coast or the Dominican. When I was reading it, it did say that different kinds of banana types, um, ornamental and whatnot, were different. So maybe the one that you guys had at Susan's house is that type. It's maybe the more ornamental kind and they might flower more, but they did say that the fruity ones the, that we use for eating bananas only fruited once a year or one time. And then you had to chop them down and start over. And that's what the whole video that I saw the other day that I brought me up with my I was this many days old when I realized bananas didn't grow on trees. Um, they were making fiber out of the bananas, the uh, stalks, the, the trunk, that's not a trunk, what is it? The stem. They were, uh, the people in Uganda were taking it and shredding it down chopping it down, peeling it, and then making, oh, that's not a good one, making, uh, oops, I'm off my paper. They were making um, fiber with it for rugs and such. So we'll make sure that that one is on the bottom or we won't use that one. So I'm gonna call that good because you can overlap onto these lighter green ones, but I don't really wanna keep adding more but I do need one. No, I don't. I'm gonna stop right there. And so you can use designer series paper for this on my card for um, my NASCAR card. I just layered, um, this is blueberry bushel and white and then real red because um, I forget the guy's name, Kyle. Logan, Kyle Logan might be his name. The number five guy here, those were the color of his car. It's like a red, white, and blue. And so I tried to make the card to match. She'll get it, I hope. She'll see what I was trying to do. Um, so we've got our designer series paper created. Now we can cut that up. And if you're not gonna mat it, you'll just want to go down one size. So the panels we're going to cut, you need five and a quarter inches wide, which I already cut, it's five and a quarter inches wide. Now we need four at one and an eighth inch. Cut at one and an eighth for four of them. I'm going to run out of paper, aren't I? Mm 
No, oh, maybe not. So we got four at one and an eighth. Nope, I didn't go over far enough. And we need two at a half an inch. Oh, I might have just. That doesn't look like a half an inch. But it's really skinny. It's more like a quarter of an inch. Nope. Uh -huh. So we need two and a half of an inch. And we just made it. Okay. And like I said, if you're going to do another um, layer like I did, then you'll go down. Um, I went on the eighth for hers. I won't get into those measurements, but um, you'll be able to figure that out. Um, I know you don't like me to talk about all those eights, so I don't like to talk about all those eights. Makes my head hurt. So now we're gonna come in here and we're gonna glue our strips on. So we've got our wide ones. And because two of them are gonna be on the bottom, you can go ahead and look through which ones you want to show up on the top. I want some that have a lot more stamping on them. So I'm gonna go with those two. This one doesn't have much. Put that down here toward this side. So these four will go on to the larger sec sections of the card. Kyle Larson, that's his name. There's a lot to learn in the NASCAR world. I used to always have to kind of act like I knew what was going on, but I sure asked my dad a lot of questions when it was on. He loved his NASCAR. But I'd ask all the questions. Oh, look at that. Look at the cool this and the cool that hey why'd they do that i think he hated when i was over and it was race day but you know it's how you learn right ask the questions figure it out reedy's on reedy's on but she she was supposed to be going away she got her car looked at today i told you guys she got caught in that hailstorm so did a lot of damage to her car the appraiser people came today. Now these small ones we're gonna stick in the two small sections here. I must be getting a little bit off with my cutting. Okay. That. All right, so we got our whole card decorated with our designer series paper that we created. And now we're gonna fold all of our score lines. They're all gonna go like up mountain folds. This, this is the one we cut so there won't be a whole lot to fold on that one. score up, crease up on your scores there. And then now we're going to set this aside while we do our monkey, um, cause we gotta make the piece now that we're gonna stick down inside. So I got a, just a 
three and a half, four and a quarter by three and a half inch piece of basic white. And I'm going to use the tree tr branch in pecan pie, pecan, pecan, whichever way you say it, pecan, pecan, or pecan. I'm going to use that across the top. Trying to clean as I go as well so that I don't end up getting it too much everywhere. And I have my blends. I got a crumb cake blend for the trunk. I think I need new ones, so I apologize if the color is. I never know till I get started with if it's got too much um, alcohol in it and it's gonna do more erasing than it is coloring. This is the dark one. I'm just trying to fill in some areas with the dark one. And then I originally started with the light one. And I'm going to use my parakeet party for the leaves. I got my dark. And I'm just going to randomly color a little bit in there. And now I have the light one, but I'll fill in the rest of the leaf with the light one. Like that. And I took the, um, vine there's two vines in here i'm not exactly sure i guess they just go together and make um maybe make a swinging vine with it i um uh, tried to use both of them and see what the difference was and i used my garden green And then I just brought it up here onto the tree to make it look like it had swung over the tree. I didn't get it up there high enough. And then I, oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's the, let's see. Because when I did this, I turned it. But, you know, I noticed, can you, you probably can't see. I noticed that the leaves then go in a different direction when I turn it. So maybe this one continues. No, not really. So I'm gonna turn it and hook the, cause I wanted it to go. Oh Lord, I just stuck that in the brown. That's what happens when you leave the pad open on your counter. All right, let me wipe that off. That's fine. Our monkey vine there is dying. So we need to make sure that uh, it has a fungus in the middle. Okay, so now we, I got that swinging around. Then we're gonna come up over here off the tip and we're going to swing it kind of off the paper yeah so that's i don't know what the difference in the two little vines is maybe this guy's smaller he's just shorter if his leaves aren't as big Maybe it should be the end of the vine. I don't know. If you figure it out when you get your set, let me know what the difference of the two little vines is all about. I'm going to get my monkey. Okay. 
So I'm going to use the monkey. Stuck on this plastic. I'm going to use the monkey that is hanging. Where is he? He's up here. This monkey, I was just playing with. So I'm going to use the monkey that's hanging out of the tree. And we will use our pecan pie. That's why I left it open because I needed it for my monkey. And I kind of tried to put him like over here so that it looked like his tail was wrapped around this vine and he was swinging from it. You know, you know how it all works good in your head. So I got him like that. And then I have my hand markers and my soft or crumb cake marker. And I'm just gonna kind of fill in his ears. I got this guy going through the vine more than my original one went through the vine, but I just colored his face with crumb cake. And I came through with my dark pecan and I just kind of did areas that I wanted to be a little bit darker. Like through here, I wanted to try and make it look like, you know, he was wrapped in the vine so the vine wasn't so prominent. And that's it. So I just colored him. Give him a little bit of dark here and there. And then I got my light. And I tried to blend the two of them together. This one I found might have a lot more alcohol in it because I see it making a lot of marks when you set the marker down it's making a lot of blobs and such like it's depositing a lot of alcohol when you set it down no mom the, the punch monkey punch only cuts out the one monkey and his face and ears and stuff and there's what three three monkeys in the set but he cuts out this monkey i believe is what the punch cuts out so i'm gonna keep going with my come back with my dark No rhyme or reason to what I'm coloring. Trying to put it darker like around his face. The monkey doesn't really have any shadows on him. I guess his body sort of has a little bit right in the center. Little sun shadow, so we'll we'll try and leave a little bit of this in the center area, a little bit lighter. Blend that out. So we're gonna call that good, just because I can keep fiddling with it and and all that good stuff. I need my parakeet party again. I'm gonna come in my um leaves with the dark and I'm just kind of putting a little splotch in all the leaves of the dark. Let's get those, see if that 
like I said, it kind of makes them He could be in a better spot. Can you make yours? Put him in a better spot. I didn't uh, angle it around enough. So it's right in his face, right through his face. But you get the idea, right? All right, so we got our binds on there. He's trying to jump and catch it. Part of it's fungus and it's dying. So we just got to be sure that. Okay, so I'm going to use little monkey words. Uh, what is just swinging by to say hi or I'm bananas about you. So I went with little monkey for a baby card. And I'm putting the words up here toward the top because when we assemble a card, we lose a bunch of space because it's going to go down here. So I'll show you when we put it together. So we don't want the monkey too close to the bottom. And so I'm going to have to try and just... No, I don't, uh, didn't try and put it in an envelope to see how much wiggle room we have to go this way if we didn't want to put the this piece all the way down to the bottom. If you wanted to like put it up a little bit, I don't know how much wiggle room we have in an envelope. And I probably could get one and see. I guess we have four and a quarter, so let's see. So that's right at four and a quarter. So we'll see what we get when. We... Oh, well, I'm going to have to put it all the way down. There is no seeing what we get because um, this one's all the way down to the bottom and it's at four and a quarter. So. So we'll just have to be careful where we stamp on our paper. If you're gonna make one like this, maybe go ahead and um, just kind of give yourself a little mental um, tick on the paper so that you know. Because we're gonna take him now and we're gonna put it through the cut and that's why we go a little bit to each side from we started just a smidge before one and we ended a smidge after four and a half just so that it has enough um, give in the slit to let this slide up and down so stick them in there make sure that um, the paper that you have showing is the one you want showing um, couple of them that I saw today had the paper had a pattern so it definitely had to go in, in a specific direction. So start sliding it through and then open it up. And then what you're going to do is fold up on your base piece. And I could use green glue but I feel that's going to be messy. I'm going to try and use my seal and see if I can get that to work for me. Put a couple strips of that on there. So we want to take our piece, center it in our slit where we want it, and then pull it down to the bottom of the card. All right. Then on the upper piece, 
we're going to put our glue here. So I got to figure out how I'm going to do this without sticking that other piece down. I used the um, green glue when I made my samples. Okay. So now he's stuck down there, turned that under. Oh, and I probably want to have it a little bit higher to the edge there. And then now fold it in so that those two like kiss each other there. and then glue those two down. So we can slide it up. Yeah, slide it up. There we go. And then push down so that we give our glue time to adhere or dry if you're using the liquid glue. And then now it's together. You just pull it up and then it'll sort of like lock into place when the um, two sides come up when it meets. So it'll be down inside of there. Like that. Then when you pull it, the box forms and it doesn't go any further. And so that's when it stands up. And I did get my monkey a little low this time, but it still looks cute. Then I have a piece of basic white somewhere here. Here we go, basic white. And then I'm using the Charming Sentiment stamp set and I grabbed the congratulations out of it and babies are a blessing. So let's get our congratulations on. I have a half an inch piece of basic white and then I just stamped it in black. You could mount this also like on a piece of, um, Coordinating cardstock, these are the garden green, maybe the lemon lime twist. But I didn't mount mine, layer mine at all. So just type the or stamp the congratulations on there. This stamp set is so confusing to me with all the words being backwards. I did go through my dies that go with it and you'll see I numbered all my stamps inside there with the number and then I've got the same number on the outside and then I went through and put the same number next to the die because the the die um, is just as hard to figure out as that so it's pretty crazy. Then I'm just going to put the congratulations like in the middle. Try and find my middle monkey there. And glue that down. Then I have just some more random basic white paper in my garden green. And I did the Babies Are a Blessing stamp. Stamp that down. And then I have, this is a one and three eighths inch 
punch. And I think I did it. No. Yeah. Um, I brought my punch over. I just, I'm having a brain fart here that I think I, this is a one and a half inch punch. This is my one and three eighths inch punch. Punch that out. My old time one and three eighths inch punch. I know we have a bunch of new punches. I need to see what sizes they are. Um, but again, should I get rid of my black whale tails just to get the lockdowns? I don't know. I don't think so. They work just fine. So I'm going to layer those two together. Put a little bit of glue on the back of the medallion y looking dealy bop there. I'm going to stick that on to the front. Now you could put a little jewel or something if you had something to put there. That would be cute. Then I'm going to make a monkey. I'll show you guys how the punch works. And I got it buried here. So open it up. I have some pecan pie paper. Now, can you see that dark around there? Like I may have blended, used that as a stencil. I did not. That, my friends, is I believe oil. So when you get a punch, because they must oil them inside to help make sure that it's gonna move properly, that's what's gonna happen for a few punches. You're gonna get a little bit of oil leakage. So I forgot about that when I punched my monkey the first time. And so I have little oils get around him, but let's see if this one's. So now I punched three monkeys out and the oil is gone from the monkey. So just give your, well, not really. See, I got some more down there from the banana, but I haven't punched through the banana yet. Just when it accidentally is getting little pieces in there. So go ahead and make sure that you're um, punching everything out a couple times to get all that oil off so that you don't end up ruining your project just because you forgot to punch it. So now I've got crumb cake and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna punch his face. He <laughs> punch his face. I'm gonna punch his face and get one of his ears. And then now I will take my punch and get his other ear. And we need to get his face from the stamp set. There's his little face. There's his little face. And I stamp that with the pecan pie. Good. Oh. Try it again. See. If... Know why he's inking up like that? But he's got an extra eyelid. Mascara's running. It's a little girl. Her mascara's running. And we're going to glue his face on. I'm going to say I don't think there's a front unless you're going to um, stamp the monkey that coordinates. You could probably make him go either way you want it. Okay. 
his little face on. I'm going to use little dots for his ears. And now there is a flat side, I think. It looked like on the punch that there was sort of a flat spot. Oh. Like here, over here and over here kind of looks flatter. So that's where I'm trying to gauge that little flat spot to go toward his face. To know if that's right or not. Oops. There's my pick tool. Okay. And now there's our little monkey. Then I just put a little bit of glue on his back side. Try to glue him down to the front. I don't want his ear hanging off the side. And I wanted him at a little bit of an angle. This guy's kind of coming down at an angle, so I wanted this little guy to be the angle. And that's it, you guys. That is our card in a box, stand up freestanding box card. Like I said, it folds down like this to fit into a standard envelope. And then you pull that up to have it stand up. And that's the end for this week. So thanks for watching, everybody. Let's see if I can get back to me, I think. There we go. Appreciate you watching, everybody. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Hopefully, I didn't take too long. What time is it? Oh, it's not even eight. Didn't even go an hour. So yay. Get back a couple extra minutes. I will be back again next week. And until then. Just enjoy life, have a great time, and pray for some good weather. Bye, everybody.